Last Wednesday, I believe the entire nation was shown what, in my opinion, was the clearest and the most powerful lesson about what it means for a Christian to let their light shine for Jesus Christ. There was a young man named Botham Jean. He was a member of the Lord's Church. He lived in Dallas. He graduated from Harding University. If you've been following the news, then you are probably aware of the tragic shooting of Botham Jean last September by Amber Geiger. Amber Geiger on that night was finishing, I believe, a 15-hour shift as a police officer. She was off duty. She went back to her apartment complex and she wasn't paying attention and instead of going to her floor, she accidentally went to the floor above and Botham Jean's apartment was right above hers, but she thought that she was entering her apartment. Apparently the door was open. So when she thinks that she's entering her apartment, she sees Botham Jean in the darkness. He's sitting on his recliner eating a bowl of ice cream. She thinks it's her apartment. So she thinks that he is a burglar. And she draws her gun and she shoots him. And she kills him. This past week, she was found guilty of murdering him. Last Wednesday, she was sentenced to 10 years in prison. Now, last Monday, a couple of days before she was sentenced, I read of how she said that she wished that she had been the one who had been killed. And how she hates herself. Every single day, she hates herself for what she did. So after she was found guilty of murder, and then last Wednesday during her sentencing, the judge allows the family of Botham to, if they wish, take the stand and make what is called a victim statement, make a statement to the murderer about what they think, about what she did. Botham Jean's brother, Brant Jean, was allowed to take the stand and make a statement to her. It's been all over the internet since he said this, the video of it. What he, has said, what he said to her has been on my mind all the time, ever since I first heard it last Wednesday night. I'd like to share it with you. This is what he said. I hope you go to God with all the guilt, all the bad things you may have done in the past. If you truly are sorry, I know I can speak for myself, I forgive you. And I know that if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. He went on to say, I love you, just like anyone else, and I'm not going to say that I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I personally want the best for you. I don't even want you to go to jail. I want the best for you because I know that's exactly what Botham would want you to do, and the best would be to give your life to Christ. He then said, Giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that Botham would want you to do. Again, I love you, and I don't wish anything bad on you. And then he looked up at the judge, and he said, Can I give her a hug, please? Please. The judge gave her permission, and Brant and Amber, the woman who killed his brother. They embraced for at least half a minute right there in the courtroom, as you can see on the screen. So when I watched that video of him giving those remarks to 
the person who murdered his brother right there in that courtroom last Wednesday, I realized something. I realized that this young man who's only 18 years old, this young man had taught me something very, very important about what it means to be a Christian. We hear a lot, we, we probably have the verse memorized because we've heard it so much. Matthew 5, verse 16, Let your light shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Brand Jean, he showed me exactly what that means. What that requires. To let your light shine. Not only that, but we talk a lot in the church, and, and you probably have in your head verses that you know that talk about forgive, forgiveness. For, uh, forgive us our debts and help us to forgive those who trespass against us. We've heard that. This young man has shown me exactly what real forgiveness requires. Luke chapter 17, verses 3 through 4 I ask you to open up your Bibles and look at that passage. Jesus tells us in this passage to forgive. He says, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. You must forgive him. And here you have this woman on Monday... I read of how she says that she hates herself, that she wishes she were dead, that she wishes that she was the one who had been shot. That's a person who has a penitent heart. And then I see the brother of the man that she killed, a Christian baptized into the body of Christ just like you and me. I see this young man say to her in front of everyone, if you truly are sorry, then I forgive you and I love you. I saw this video probably about 10.30 at night. Watched it on YouTube. That was the first time I became aware of it. Beth and the girls were already asleep. I went into my girls' rooms and I just looked down at their sleeping forms and I thought to myself, someone killed them and said that they wish they were dead because they did that. Would I be able to look them in the eye and say, I forgive you? Would I be able to look them in the eye and say, I love you? Would I be able to, in front of God and everyone in the world, because it was captured on video, would I be able to say from the heart to the person who murdered my family, I want the best for you. I want you to give your life to Christ. I want you to be a Christian like I am. I want you to go to heaven like I am. I want to go to heaven. I want to walk those golden streets with you. I don't know that I could. I hope that I could. I want to. This young man did it. It is the most powerful example of what being a Christian is that I have seen in my adult life. I want to share with you again something else that he said. Look at the highlighted parts. What, what is he saying to the woman who killed his brother? I hope you go to God. I hope you go to God with all the guilt, all the bad things you may have done in the past. What else does he say? I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not going to say that I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but... I personally want the best for you. I want the best for you because I know that's exactly what Botham, who is also a member of the Church of Christ, also a Christian, 
I know that's exactly what Botham would want you to do, and what is the best that Botham and I want for you? It is to give your life to Christ. Giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that Botham would want you to do. Again, I love you, and I don't wish anything bad on you. He even said, I, I don't even want you to go to jail. When I read that, when I watch it over and over again, which I have been, I'm reminded of a passage in the Bible, something that Paul said that was very similar. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 20. And that's going to be the basis of the rest of the lesson this morning. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 through 20. Now to give you just a little bit of background, we're going to start with verse 15. He's talking to Christians. He says, For this reason I too, having heard of the faith in the Lord Jesus which exists among you, and your love for all the saints... Do not cease giving thanks for you while making mention of you in my prayers. So he's praying for them. He's praying for them. Verse 17 tells, tells us exactly what he's praying for. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you a spirit of wisdom and a revelation in the knowledge of him. Now, think of this. Grant Jean, Botham's brother, wanted Amber Geiger to go to God. He wanted his brother's murderer to give her life to Christ. That means that he wanted her to know God. And what was Paul praying for? He was praying that we come to know God. And yes, if you look at verse 17, the whole verse talks about the Father giving the Ephesian Christians a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And yes, that's most likely referring to the miraculous spiritual gifts of wisdom and revelation which the Holy Spirit gave to the early church 2,000 years ago. And yes, it's true that those miraculous gifts of direct wisdom and revelation coming directly from God have ceased when the Bible was completed. But that's not the main point. The main point that God is making through Paul is that he wants mankind to know him. Knowing God is more important than anything you will ever accomplish in life. Thus says the Lord, let not the wise man boast of his wisdom, let not the mighty man boast of his might, let not the rich man boast of his riches, but let him who boasts Boast of this, that he understands and knows me. Jeremiah 9, verses 23 and 24. Knowing God is more important than anything. You want to know what eternal life is really all about? Take your mind off of heaven and put it on God. Because Jesus said in John 17, verse 3, this is eternal life that they may know you. The only true God. John 17 verse 3. Eternal life is knowing God. And not knowing God. Those who don't know him. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verses 7 through 9. That passage says that those who will spend eternity in hell away from God are those who do not know him. I can't get it out of my head that Botham Jean's brother does not want the person who killed his brother to spend eternity in hell. I can't get it out of my head that he wants Amber Geiger, even her, to know God, to give her life to Christ. I can't stop thinking about the fact that this young man looks at the person who murdered his brother and he sees not a murderer, he sees a soul who needs Jesus. He sees a soul who needs salvation. That's what he teaches me. That's what you and I need to do. When we look at people, what do we see? Do we see the waiter 
the co-worker? Do we see a friend, a neighbor? Do we see an enemy? Or do we see a soul who needs to know God? Keep reading in the passage. Verse 18. Paul went on to say, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Botham Jean's brother wants Amber to know God, and he wants her to know something else too. He wants her to know the same thing that God wants you and me to know, and that is the hope of being called by God. That's, that's all part of what he said to her. I want you to give your life to Christ. Christians, every one of us has been called by God. Every Christian in this room has been called by God. Peter says that we have been called out of darkness and into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. The Bible says that, it, that God calls us through the gospel. 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 14. The same gospel that each one of us obeyed when we believed in Christ and repented of our sins and were baptized into Christ just as our new sister in Christ, Amber Walls, did last Thursday night. And Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12, that God continues to call us into his own kingdom and glory. But I want you to look at verse 18 on the screen. God wants us to know the hope of his calling. Hope, the word means a desire with expectation. What do we expect by this calling of God? What do we desire of this calling by God? Paul brought it out earlier in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, to be holy, to be blameless, to be adopted, as God's children. Christians, that describes you. It describes me. That's what Botham's brother wants for his brother's killer. To have that same hope, that same expectant desire, to have the same relationship with Christ that he has, that Botham has, in which you and I have. What powerful love that young man has. What kindness he shows. What compassion he has. But then keep looking at verse 18. God also wants us to know the riches of the inheritance he has for us. Christians never forget this. Because you are a Christian, you are God's adopted child. And that means that you have obtained an inheritance the Holy Spirit was given as a guarantee of that fact that you have obtained an inheritance. And Peter says that that inheritance is kept in heaven for you. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. And God wants you to know about it. And praise God, Botham Jean's brother wants the woman who took his brother's life to know about it too. That's why he told her right there in court that he wants the best for her, even for her. And that the best would be for her to give her life to Christ. What a powerful lesson this young man has taught us, Christians. I want you to think about the people whom you know who are lost. I want you to think about the people you know who are lost, who are not your friends, but perhaps are your enemies. The people who, when they walk into a room, you want to walk out of the room because you don't really like them that much. Do you think that, do you think this about them? Do you have that same wish that this young man has? I want you to give your life to Christ. I want you to know the riches of the inheritance in heaven that would be waiting for you if only you would become the child of God that he wants you to be. And I want to help you get there. Is that you and I? 
Is that the wish we have for people we know who are lost? Let's keep reading. Verses 19 and 20. What else does Paul want the Ephesians to know? And what is the surpassing greatness of his power towards us who believe? These are in accordance with the working of the strength of his might, which he brought about in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. You see, there's something else that Botham's Je- Botham Jean's brother taught me with his simple act of Christ-like love and forgiveness and compassion towards the woman who took his brother's life. Brandt taught me about the power of God that is available to you and me as Christians. Paul is talking about it here in verses 19 and 20. He says that God's power has surpassing greatness. He says that it's shown towards us who believe. That would be you and me, Christians. And that's also talking about Botham's brother, who is our brother in Christ. And he says in verse 20 that it's the same power that raised Jesus from the dead and seated him at God's right hand in heaven. I have seen it asked over and over again on social media for the past three days. How could this young man do something like this? I couldn't do it. I, I see over and over again in the comments. How could he do something that I'm pretty sure I would not be able to do? It's because of the power of God. That's why. Let me tell you what the Bible says about this great power of God. Open up your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. Look at verses 1 through 6. Ephesians 2 verses 1 through 6. He says, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath like the rest of mankind. But God being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You and I were dead in our sins before we became Christians, and it was the power of God that was shown through his grace and mercy towards you and me that made us no longer dead in our sins and trespasses, that made us alive instead. That's the power of grace. That's the power of mercy. That's the power of forgiveness. And I see that power in Brant Jean. I see it when he looks at the woman who took his brother away from him and he says to her, I love you, I forgive you, I want the best for you. That's exactly what God said to you. Do you realize the strength and the power it takes to say something like that to a person who takes the life of your own brother. Where did he get that strength from? He's a Christian. He's a Christian who has humbly submitted it to God. He gets that strength, that power from God. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16 says that Christians are strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man. That is what has happened inside the heart and soul of Brant Jean. He was strengthened with power through the Spirit of God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Look at that in your Bibles. It says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. You know how many look at what this young man did and they say to themselves, how in the world could he show so much love and mercy to her of all people? It's the power of God working in him. You want to know how the spirit of God was working in him? It's simple. See this book? The Authors of every one of the books of the Bible were inspired by the Holy Spirit. And this young man 
with simply doing what the Holy Spirit in the Bible told him to do. It's as simple as that. He forgave this woman. He chose to love her. He chose to wish that she become a Christian and receive all the blessings that being a Christian involves, just like him. And he made all of these choices for her to feel these ways for her, to wish this for her, simply because God told him to in the Bible. That's why. And you and I can be the same thing. You and I can be the same way. We can do the same thing. So yes, Botham Jean's brother has taught me a lot. He has taught me what walking the walk of a Christian instead of just talking the talk. He's showed me what that really means. He showed me what real forgiveness requires. He has reminded me of what God wants me to hope for. Not just hope for myself. Not just hope for my brothers and sisters in Christ. But to hope for everyone all of the lost, including my worst enemies, including the ones who have hurt me the most, that they all come to know God and come to be his children and receive that wonderful inheritance of heaven no matter what they've done here on earth. And he has shown me exactly how powerful God can be and act in my life if I simply, truly do what this young man wished in court for his brother's murderer, give my life to Christ. And I hope he has taught all of us these things, brothers and sisters, because we need to learn them. We need to live them. We need to let our light shine as brightly as this young brother in Christ has done this week. Christians, if you need the encouragement and prayers of the church to do exactly that, or if you are here and you are not a Christian and you want to become a Christian, you want to be like what God wants you to be as you've heard this morning, and you're ready to put on Christ through faith and repentance and baptism like our new sister Amber did last week, then I urge you to do this now as we stand and as we sing.